Okay, we're going to start section 5.1. Um, and it deals with polynomial equations. Okay, and what polynomial equations are is anything that has a higher power of 2. Okay, so it works the same way as everything we've been doing. Okay, what we're trying to solve for is x. Okay, and now there's just going to be a lot more solutions when you end up going like this. Um, so the first question that asks is, does x equal negative 1? Okay, so well, really what all you have to do is just plug it in and see if it works. Okay, so 8 times negative 1 to the 7th minus 10 times negative 1 to the 5th. Does that equal 4 times negative 1 to the 4th minus 2 times negative 1 squared? Okay, so let's do the power. Two, negative 1 to the 7th is still negative 1. Minus 10 times negative 1 to the 5th. Any odd power, it stays the same sign. Um, even power, negative 1 times negative 1 is, is positive. So anything even will be positive. 4 times 1 minus 2 times 1 is even. So that would be negative 8 be plus 10 and this would be 4 minus 2 uh, this would be 2 this would be 2 so the answer is yes okay so does x equal negative 1 the answer is yes okay so that's all you have to do on those questions um, okay so the next thing we have to talk about is just the basics of polynomials okay so when you have polynomials again it's something greater than um, 2 3x to the fifth uh, plus 7x to the ninth uh, minus 3x squared. Okay. Um, so what we have to do here is when they talk about degree or the leading coefficient, what we have to do is find the highest power. Okay, so the powers are 5, 9, and 2. You have to find the highest. So it's going to be this one. Now take everything with it. Okay, even like the plus sign or the minus sign in, in front of it. Okay, so it's plus 7x to the ninth. Okay, so it's positive 7x to the ninth. Okay, so when they talk about degree, all that means is what's the power. Okay, so you find the highest power, and the degree is that number. Okay, so the degree is 9. And what this means is that this function will have nine possible solutions. Okay, so the degree is 9, and then the leading coefficient is the number that's in front of this, okay? So it's seven, okay? And what that'll tell you is the direction of the graph, okay? So when I graph this equation, okay, remember anything odd, and we kind of went through this in graphing, anything odd will go up and to the right, okay? So it starts down here and comes up, and especially if it's even or a, a positive number, okay? So odd, it means it goes in opposite directions, so it either starts left or starts starts from the left, so it's either on the top or bottom, and it either goes up and to the right or down and to the right, okay? And it's goes ba that's based on this number, if it's positive or negative. Since it's positive, and you don't know what the middle looks like, okay, it could look like a lot of different things, um, but you do know the ending behavior looks something like this. It starts down here, ends up here, Okay, so when they say describe the behavior as x approaches negative infinity and positive infinity, so as x approaches negative infinity, which is this, you're going to say y approaches, so as we go this way, this is going to keep going down to the bottom, negative infinity. Okay, so as x approaches positive infinity, y would approach, as it keeps going up, infinity. Okay, so that would be the end behavior of those. All right. So that's what the degree and the leading coefficient will give you as basis of the graph, okay? All right, so next one is 3x to the seventh uh, minus 4x cubed plus seven. Again, find the highest power, okay? This is a power of zero, one, uh, three, seven, so this is the highest. Take everything with it. Um, so your degree is the power, seven. Uh, the leading coefficient is the number in front, which is three, okay, and notice it's positive. That's the important thing of it. So if we have some sort of graph, it's odd. So that means they're going in different directions. And since it's a positive, it's gonna look the same way as before. Okay, so the end behavior as X approaches, approaches negative infinity, Y will approach down here at the bottom, negative infinity. Uh, the next one is X approaches uh, infinity, Y will approach infinity. Okay. 
the last one. 2x plus 7, x minus 5, uh, negative x plus 3. Okay, and what they're going to want you to do here is foil all this out. Now, the only thing that matters, though, is the leading coefficient and the, the highest power. And you'll get the highest power just by multiplying the x's together. So we could do all the rest, but um, it really is not going to give you anything that you, that you need. All we need is the leading, the leading coefficient and the degree, and you get that by multiplying these three things. So 2x times x, so it would be 2x times x times negative x. Uh, so that would be x times x times x would be uh, x cubed, and 2 times negative 1 would be negative 2. Okay, so again, this is the highest power. Uh, so our degree is 3, whatever the power is. And the leading coefficient is negative 2. So the graph. The degree of 3, so it's going to start, it's going to end or beginning end either up and to the right or down and to the right. And we'll tell that by this. Since it's negative now, it gets flipped. Okay, and again, we don't know what the middle looks like exactly, but we do know these two things. Okay, so as x approaches negative infinity, notice we're going up now, not down, so y will approach infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, as we move this way, this graph keeps going down, so y will approach negative infinity. All right, so now to complete the graph, we're going to have to find x-intercepts, okay? And that'll be the next step that we have to do to solve these things, okay? So they want to get a basics of what the graph is going to look like. So the next thing we need to do is find intercepts. x minus 1, x minus 1, 3 minus x. Okay, uh, that's f of x. Remember, before you graph these, make sure you get everything to one side, okay? So let's find the x-intercepts first. And that's, to find the x-intercepts, you set y equal to zero and solve. Okay, so you have x plus two could be zero, uh, x plus one is zero. Because if anything is zero, then zero times anything makes everything zero. Okay, so all these can be zero, x minus one and three minus x. Okay, so this one would be x equals negative two. This is x equals negative one. This is x equals one, and this is x equals three. So your points of your x-intercepts are negative two, zero, negative one, zero, one, zero, and three, zero. Okay, so we can plot those. Okay, uh, so negative two, zero, negative one, zero, one, three. Now, let's get the leading coefficient and the degree. So x times x times x times negative x would be x to the fourth, and there's a negative, so it would be negative x to the fourth. So x to the fourth goes in the same direction. Either both sides go up or both sides go down, and you tell that by this power, so, or so this sign. Since it's negative, they're both going to go down. Okay, so that's what we know so far. Um, and based on these, now we don't know how high it goes, but it can go like this. And again, these can go as high as need be, this can go as low as need be. And you'll tell that by putting group points in in the middle. Okay, but this is the general idea of what the graph looks like. Okay. Okay. Next one. Find the solution. Okay, so x, x plus 7 squared, x minus 6, is less than 0. Okay, so in order to plot the graph, 
we need to find x intercepts first. So we're going to set it equal to zero. Okay, set y equals zero, which is this side, and solve. Okay, so we could have x equals zero. X plus seven squared is equal to zero. And x minus six is equal to zero. Okay, so the first one, x equals zero. So the point is zero, zero. The second one, see how it's squared? So x will equal negative seven, but it actually equals it twice. Okay, so it's uh, negative seven, zero. Seven. Now when it's squared, when it happens twice, anything that happens twice, it'll hit and go straight back. It won't go through. Okay, so anytime you have something uh, to the power squared, that's what the graph at that point will look like, okay? Anything where it's just x plus seven, it'll go through the graph. So let's say that's seven, it'll look something like that, okay? But if it's squared, it'll hit and go straight back. And the last one, it would be six. So that point is six, zero. Six, okay. All right, so in order to find your power, it'd be x, x squared, and the x. Okay, because if you foiled this out, it'd be x squared plus 14x plus 49. Um, so x squared, x, and x. Okay, so that would be uh, x to the fourth. Okay, so they go the same direction. And since it's, power, it's uh, positive, they will both go up. Okay, so we know it looks something like this. Okay, and we just finished the graph. Now this one happens twice, so it's gonna hitch and go straight back. Again, I don't know how high this goes, okay, but we just say it goes something like that. Now this one only happens once, so it's gonna go through. And this one only happens once, so it's gonna go through. And there's your graph, okay? And again, this can go as low as you want, this can go as high as you want. Um, but it's really not gonna make any difference for what we have to do based on it. Now we want it is when it's less than zero. So that's the y value. So this is when y is equal to zero. So it's less than zero as you go down and it's greater than zero as you go up. So we want the intervals. Okay, so remember that we want intervals here. All right, okay, so the intervals are the x values. That's how you get intervals, and it's less than zero. So this is above zero right here. Here's where it starts. There's where it ends, okay? So it's only this portion, okay? So it's the interval, um, and it's not equal to zero, so that's why it's not bracket. So this would be from zero to six. Again, if it was less than or equal to, then it would be a bracket, but it's not. So this is your interval, this is your solution. Next one, we have x plus five, x minus four, two plus x, it's greater than zero. Okay, so anytime you see this, we want intervals again. And so what we need to do is graph it. So the first thing to graph is you need x-intercepts, so this would be negative five, this would be four, zero, and this would be negative two, zero. And again, you set them each equal to zero and that's how you get this number. Uh, one, two, four, five. Notice none of them are squared, so they only happen once. Two, three, four, okay. Uh, now we need the leading, um, or the, the leading coefficient in the highest degree, or we need the degree. So x times x times x would be x cubed. Uh, there's no numbers in front of it, so it'd be positive, okay? So you know it is going up and to the right. And then you just draw it in. Everything happens once, so again, this can go as high or as low as I want. Completion, okay? Now again, this is when y is equal to zero, 
So this would be greater than zero. This would be less than zero. And we want it when it's greater than zero. So when is the graph above this line? Well, from that point on forever. And from this point to this point. Okay, it's above that line. Okay, so that would be from negative five to negative two. And also from four forever. So that'd be four to infinity. So when you have two of them, you put the U in between. It's the union of those two sets. Okay, let me rewrite it. So it'd be from negative five to negative two, and from four to infinity. All right, last one, it says identify the correct graph and the x-intercept. So when you see something like this, it'll give you a multiple choice, okay? And so really you just plot the x-intercepts and then you find the y-intercept and you can solve from there. Um, we just get a basic of a graph. So they'll give you four graphs and you just kind of match it up. Six. So we do the first by x-intercepts. Again, set each one of these equal to zero. So that'd be the point six, zero. This would be the point negative two, zero. And the last one would be two, zero. Okay. So that'd be my first thing to do is to graph those. All right. Then I need the leading. The, high, uh, the degree and the leading coefficient, so x times x times negative x. Uh, so that'd be x cubed, except one of them is negative, so this would be negative. So I know it's gonna go down and to the right. Okay. But it also wants the y-intercept. And remember, anytime you want the y-intercept, you set x equal to zero and solve. So x minus six would be negative six, or zero minus six, and zero plus two is two, and two minus zero is two. And you multiply these out, negative six times two times two is negative 24. So imagine that this is negative 24 down here. Okay, and then that's the y-intercept. Okay, so you graph it. So that. Okay, so that would be how you match that up. Okay, so this is section 5.1. Please let me know if you have any questions.